quite vocal around Mars Observer really kicked the traces over and demanded that NASA go back to its earlier live programming. The Europeans don't do that. What they did is they, they flew by the asteroid Friday afternoon, and it wasn't until Saturday morning that they had a, a downlink of the data. They then had, 12 hours after that, a press conference, a very tightly controlled press conference, where it wasn't until they were almost an hour in that they showed the first picture that came in from the Rosetta flyby of that, this asteroid called Steins, discovered, by the way, in 69, not, not 67, as I said the last time I was on. Anyway, the, the point that I'm making is that at this press conference on Saturday morning, they announced an hour into it, mind you, that they had excellent pictures from the wide-angle camera, meaning the large field-of-view camera. Right. But that nine minutes before closest approach, something like 3,000 miles away from the flyby, which was an 500-mile uh, flyby, their narrow-angle camera, which was five times better resolution than the wide-angle, for some reason went into safe mode and remain suspended in that mode electronically, taking no data, no pictures, recording nothing, nada, zip, um, and did not come back online for several hours. Again, all by itself. And that this was a really baffling mystery. They were going to dig into it, et cetera, et cetera, before their next encounter, which is in 2010. However, what this means is that the critical high-res pictures – that we and the world would have seen of this asteroid will never be seen because ostensibly they were never taken. Now, I've been working with the wide-angle images, and I have made some very intriguing discoveries over here at Enterprise. So what we're in the process of doing is putting together a, a paper, an article, which will encompass not only what we see in the imagery that we've got, which I don't think they wanted us to see. And the bottom line is that, that asteroid Steins may not be an asteroid after all. Richard, I, I, and I want to do something for you for helping us, but I also want to do something for the Coast to Coast audience. I'm going to buy, Amazon is selling your book, Dark Mission, right now for $16.47. Mm -hmm. I want to order, and I'll have Tom work on the paperwork, 50 books from you at the Amazon price, you sign it, and maybe you can get Mike Barrett to sign it as well. I'm going to give 50 books out over the course of the next couple of weeks to, oh, to 50 Coast-to-Coast cool. -coast listeners and uh, just do it on my discretion. But uh, but we're going to do that. But uh, well, You well, know, George, that's really good of you because without reading what's in that book, if, if new people come to this audience and they're coming constantly because you're attracting them with good programming, they may not understand the context of our discussion because we're kind of starting in the middle of the story. Right. So having the book and having it for free, and having it for free and sign That's good. <laughs> is a really cool deal. I'm going to give the first one that you and Mike Bear sign to Bad Boy, who heads up the NighthawkZone.com, because he has been so helpful and gracious to this program over the, over many years. I mean, this this is a guy who religiously listens to Coast to Coast, who helped me out a lot when I first started, critiquing me, sometimes kind of brutally, but he did he did what he thought was right, and we've uh, kicked up a great relationship. I'm going to give him your first signed book of the 50 we're going to buy, and uh, he's got my email address. He'll send me his address, and I'm going to get him one of your books. Okay. And uh, make a special note to Bad Boy just on that one for me, if you would. From the nighthawkzone dot com, but uh, uh, you, you know when when I go to conferences with you, and uh, we've been to a couple, you pack the room, uh, pack the room with people who are fascinated with all kinds of things that you present. I want I want to know the mindset of Richard Hoagland. How do you when you, for example, have people and, and people you work with, for example, point out to you the uh, the robot head and things like that, and then you run with it. How did this all start for you? When, when you when you started doing Sidonia, the face on Mars, 
and you know you were you were looking at some of the Viking pictures. I mean, but what made you go from a regular researcher because you did a lot of that with CBS and your consultancy work to someone who really looked at these strange mysteries? What happened? What did that? Well, I've I've always been a generalist. I have not considered that I was narrow band limited to you know, a certain field of study, and I have this avid curiosity, and I love asking questions and figuring out answers. And what happened was that I started bumping into, you know, the the, the glass ceiling, the one that Hillary has not put any cracks in yet, which is the, 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 the ceiling that separates what we are told from what, in fact, exists. And it's not just NASA. I mean, I spend a lot of time talking on this program and in other venues about NASA, but it's, it's government-wide, George. It's corporation-wide. It's society-wide. At every turn, the lie is different at every level, which is the mantra of, of dark mission, given to us by a very interesting intel source who has been very reliable and steadfast over the years. How old is that person now? He's mm, comparable to you and me. An old man. Huh. <laughs> you remember the joke about you no know, old, old, bold pilot? Yeah, yeah, I do. Don't well, can't repeat it on here. This is a very cautious guy, and obviously that's why he's still around. Well, but, that's but, true. But he, he he gave me this incredible line, which really is a bumper sticker description of what's wrong. Why eighty percent of the electorate polled feel we're headed in the wrong direction. Why change has become such a watchword in this political season that everybody is jumping on the bandwagon that Obama started. It's because people feel in their gut, reinforced by watching television and surveying the net or having email from their friends and links forwarded and whatever way they get their news, that we are really up a creek without a paddle in so many areas because somebody's been fiddling and frittering while Rome literally was burning down all around them. That's true. I mean, this energy situation is absolutely despicable. It's greed, Richard. It's all about greed. It's short-term greed, and to hell with the country, the nation, the citizenry, you know, the population, with anybody but mining their own pockets on a short time frame of one or two years. And we frittered away a half a century. Well, that's the bad news. The good news is that now people are really fired up, and I think we're going to see some major changes, regardless of what happens in in, in November, because this is being driven from the bottom up. We are having a not-so-quiet revolution, George, and and this program is at the cutting edge, you know, the uh, the tip of the spear or the front of the surfboard, depending upon which metaphor you like. When I noticed today that some of the major media today, after we've been talking about this for well over a year, about CERN, which we'll talk about with you next hour, mm-hmm. could cause a problem. And now they're starting to report on it and write on it. I said to myself today, I says, we truly are on the cutting edge on this program. I mean, we are way ahead of the curve. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's obvious. That, that, that's been a given ever since our created this incredible art form with Alan. But the, the experts have had the vision on this show to help lead us like you have and people like Daniel Brinkley and, and, you know, folks who have come on and who are light years, Stan Dale, light years ahead of everybody else. Well, that's why this audience is very special, because they realize that, you know, the the, the, the quality goes in before the name goes on. Richard, we're going to keep you for one more hour, then I'm going to do open lines during the last hour. We'll talk a little bit about CERN and some other things in space with our special guest tonight, pinch hitter Richard C. Hoagland from the Enterprise Mission.com.